Hi, this is Jeremy Keller, Director of Recruiting here at Oakley Trucking, and I'm your host for this podcast. This is the Oakley Podcast, Trucking Business and Family. This is episode 79. So today's uh, podcast, I'm going to get a little in-depth with some of our operation managers here. Uh, got three uh, good guys, Scotty Crisco, uh, Jason Webb, Bradley Simpson, and we're going to get fired up with talking to these guys uh, about what's going on with Oakley operations. Um, it's going to be some good in-depth stuff. I, I want to talk different things about what they think is going on right now in the trucking industry and in the dry bulk industry. want to hear about some of their responsibilities as operation managers, um, you know, hauling for certain customers, where we are going to expand next, what we're, you know, just how divisions work together. So we're going to get into some good information uh, from these guys of what's going on here at Oakley Trucking. So be sure and listen and, and pay close attention. You're going to hear some good information here in just a minute. Uh, but first, before I get started, I want to give you a good Oakley update that I've been doing here lately. You got some good information here that I think everybody should know. Got to start out with a downer first for everybody, just so you know. We lost one of our good owner operators this past week, actually a couple weeks ago when this comes out. But his name is Jim Lane. He's out of Brookfield, Missouri. Truck number 8909, he was with us three and a half years, and he lost a battle with COVID. And it was a sad deal, 60 years old, um, just a great family, great guy. We miss him around here. He, uh, uh, We went to the funeral up in Brookfield, and just, I mean, it was just really good. Uh, i tell you what was really neat about it is they, his buddies built a bracket on the back of his truck that he drives, and set him up on there and took him to graveside one last ride one last ride for old jim lane it was really great you know it was it was a good uh good service so uh remember him and his family uh we really hate to lose him also uh you know i wanted to touch on this we talked about this on the oakley update but dumping in bad situations uh we've had that happen i i, I think it people get confused but Safety is a priority. It, customer service does not take priority over dumping in a bad situation, if you know what I mean. We, we, you guys have got to pay attention where you're dumping uh, these trailers, and what you've got to communicate and let us know what's going on. We may touch on that here in a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, you guys are, are paying attention where you're dumping. And, and I know there's some rough places out there you got to – you know, these customers want you to dump in, but you're going to have to uh, remember it's got to be safe place to do it. So be sure and watch that. And the last thing I got on the Oakley update is I'd like to recognize one of our owner-operators been here a long time, and this gentleman's name is Mr. Joe Dobbs. He's been with us 20 years. And he was actually probably here longer than that because he was here a long time ago, back in the 90s, 80s or 90s, somewhere around there. And uh, so I don't know exactly what his total is, but I know since he came back, he's been here 20 years truck number 4130 uh he does pneumatic tank with us he's done he's done dumps he did dumps for a long time with us he's out of conway arkansas not far from me i know where he lives he's got an 05 peterbilt those 379 x peaks good looking truck uh it's red it's got lights all over it uh i see him out here when i come in the morning sometimes and you know he's always just got the the uh parking lights on you know, because that, that's the thing. It looks good, and it looks sharp, man. So he's a great guy. Always has a good story if you talk to him. But congratulate him on on 20 years here at Oakley Trucking. Next time you see him, he's a great asset to uh, to our company. So, all right, that's the Oakley update, and it is sponsored by Arrow Truck Sales. Go see Keith Wilson and Trey Visor at Arrow Truck Sales in Springfield, Missouri. Over the past eight years, Arrow has built a great working relationship with Oakley Trucking. They specialize in getting new owner-operators approved for trucks and upgrading existing ones. Carrying a wide selection of all makes and models, they pride themselves with helping customers through every step of buying a used truck, including service after the sale. Listen to new Oakley owner-operator and Aero customer, Sean McMahon. Yeah, it's my first time being an owner-operator, so it was first for me. And uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, and they made it real easy for me. I wound up getting a uh, 2018 579 Peak with the Cummins. 450 and a 13-speed. I uh, worked hauling cars for 15 years, and I've been driving about 23 years. Yeah, I would send everybody I know to to Mr. Keith over there at Arrow Truck Sales. Uh, I've had a really good experience with them, and uh, first class 
kind of guy. When you go see Arrow Truck Sales in Springfield, Missouri, tell them you heard this ad on the Oakley Podcast, and they will give you half off your first payment when financing through Transport Funding. Give Keith Wilson and Trey Visor a call at 573-216-6047. So let's get started on this episode, guys, and do a little talking with our operation managers. Now, we've got uh, Scotty Crisco, Bradley Simpson, Jason Webb here with us. And you guys have already been on the podcast once or twice, right? I have. Yeah, I think this is me and Jason and I's uh, third stint together. (laughs) Nice. So you're regulars then. Bash Brothers. That's why y'all volunteered. One of you did, and the other said, hey, we're good to right. go. Yeah, just turn the mic on and let us go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we got end dumps and pneumatic tanks. Uh, we're missing a hopper representative, but you can probably do that, can't you, Will? Yeah, we'll, we'll fill in nicely. Wing it. Yeah. Wing it. Well, I want to get you guys together because I know, you know, I hear from our drivers a lot of times, they want to hear about pneumatics. They want to hear about end dumps. They want to hear about hoppers. They want to hear about – what goes on inside these walls up at Oakley Trucking and how things are actually produced, you know, customers, freight, what we're doing next. So I just want to get you guys kind of roundtable it up here and and I'll get you started and then we'll just go from there. So some of the stuff, um, you know, I, I think to give our listeners an idea of of what it's like right now at Oakley Trucking. And we'll start with you, Bradley, on the pneumatic side. I mean, you've been here a long time. Uh, you seen anything like this? I have definitely not ever seen it like this. It's, I mean, it is unreal, busy in all divisions, let alone just pneumatics, but it is, it is nonstop. You can't, you can't turn, turn stuff down quick enough. I mean, it's just constantly rolling in people coming at you from every direction, people you've never heard of. And, people you hear from every day with new stuff I wonder why you think it is i mean just a shortage of trucks i don't know if last year scared scared them you know and they're trying to stay ahead stay caught up but there's definitely a driver shortage you know I'm, i know everybody's heard that but just getting guys hired that want to do the work that we ask them to do every day is it's tough to get them and keep them and have them stay around the pneumatic stuff i mean it is um you know it 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 goes into so many different things i mean what's some of the stuff you're hauling mainly now that you i mean requested is it just all over the board or i mean it really is it's um you know a a lot of it we go to these big oil and gas refineries your exxons and you name it any gas station you see we go to the refineries deliver them catalyst we deliver them salt we deliver them all kinds of stuff but mainly catalyst and salt are the biggest and it's all over the country every corner state you can find we we're going to them and we're asked to go to them all the time yeah it's big business there it is are the plastics what about that plastics same way it's they you know they go to refineries they go to i mean same deal they go all over arkansas go all over the country canada places that make plastic bottles they take it to refineries and stuff like that too so it's it's all over the place and it's out of control busy right now too we just can't keep up yeah what you guys take scotty jason what what do y'all think why the business is what it is i mean i i I don't uh i remember jason and i talking to nick dulaney another one of our operations managers this was this had to have been last September or late August and we were still kind of struggling to find freight and you know and and uh I remember Dulaney walked over and talked to me and Jason and Shane and my brother and he said well I just got off the phone with so and so and he told us that we're going to be entering the uh, commodity super cycle beginning in the winter of 20 and It'll blow up in 2021. And I was thinking, man. That's interesting. Yeah. I wish I could find that yeah. guy. When Maybe start that. S- sit down with him and look at some future investments. But I'm not even sure what a commodity super cycle is. I, I, can, t- I can tell you this. It seems as though that uh, we've got somewhat of a perfect storm going on here. I think for years now, uh, even before all this, we've been seeing a shortage of truck drivers, a shortage, certainly a shorter of owner operators, um, entering into the industry. And now that whatever fire was burning there has just been gassed on by, like Bradley said, I think last year people kind of clammed up and customers sort of, you know, maybe 
snuck into their shell because they weren't sure of what was going on with the pandemic and whatnot. And now uh, it seems as though that they're ready to turn loose and maybe try to play catch up. I, you know, I'm not, I don't have all the answers. I can just tell you the things that I see. That's what it seems like. I mean, it, it, I mean, people just quit, you know, for a long time. Not a light switch. They just quit working, quit yeah. doing anything. And then that, that ripple effect, it just takes a while to catch up. And then next thing you know, you, you look up and everybody's behind on everything, yeah. on trying to make everything, I guess. Almost, the, I could almost like, to, to kind of analogize the situation, you guys remember when the pandemic first started and all of a sudden all the paper towels and toilet paper were nowhere to be found? And, you know, uh, people just panicked and like, you know, went and bought stuff. You know, and it's almost... You, you kind of get that feeling now with the demand for the truck and the equipment. It's almost like, you know, customers can feel the pressure uh, of other customers. You know, maybe they see our trucks on the road or they see our trucks at maybe their competitors' facilities or whatnot. I mean, it's it's seems like sort of a similar feeling. Like everybody's like, oh, my gosh, I better, you know, I better ask for the truck now. You know, we're at, we've got customers asking for trucks. In the I know in pneumatics it's different because, you know, you got schedules – weeks on out but in dumps a lot of the times it's a uh, fly by the seat of our pants type deal where customers are needing trucks tomorrow or the next day well now customers are understanding that i better start asking for trucks next week next month yeah so yeah i think you see uh a lot of you know just rebound from covid i think you know pretty much pick an industry and everybody's you know running wide open whether it's to make up for last year or they're feeling a lot better about this year, you know, whatnot. Um, that's part of it. You know, there, there's less trucks on the road, it seems like. You know, you, we've heard that for years and years. Guys are retiring or getting out of trucking, and, you know, there's not a line of 18- to 20-year-olds looking to get in a truck and go, you know, spend time out on the road. Um, so I think that's part of it. I, I think also, you know, part of what we're seeing is, you know, people are behind, people need – product moved and they look at past performance you know there's still a whole lot of other trucking companies out there you know and they're using past performance to gauge the results they're looking for you know and so i think that's just kind of a fruit of a lot of different people's labor outside of this office and inside this office you know just to you know people know who they can count on yeah. especially right now when it's they're in dire straits. Well, and that's why they're starting to figure that out now and plan ahead. Yeah. You know, I better get my name on the list to get me a truck. Right. Or it ain't going to happen. And uh, it's just, a, it's amazing. I, You know, what I wonder about now is how long this is going to last. You know, the, the whatever you said a while ago, super cycle. Hopefully for about and, another 23 years. Wouldn't yeah. that be great? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you bet. You know, as is a, because there's a lot of drivers that probably got out of it and ain't getting back in, and there's a lot that retired too. We've seen that on our yeah at our company here, but you know you just don't know. You hope next year we have the the same kind of boom that we ha we are now, but typically they don't last, you know, in, in history. But I tell you, this is this is not you know in the recruiting side of it, it's not ending. It's it's an ongoing thing now, to where it's tougher and tougher to get guys and it's it used to be an up and down you know it's going to go up and down well now it's it, you know it's kind of been down for over a year year and a half to, and we're like man when's it going to come back you yeah. know jumping off of what you just said jeremy i would like to say for all the owner operators that do happen to be listening to this particular program and you know the ones that have been with us for a while know this but right now is as good as i any of us has ever seen it so there's no reason that you can't make any money. If you know, there's going to be times this thing will flip. We all know that, where uh, the demand will drop. But I think it's very important for any of you guys that if you see a weekend where you ain't got much going on and you want to make some extra money, maybe talk to the to the misses or see if you can make plans. Because I promise you, we can use you right now. The more that uh, I mean, what's that old saying? Get it while the getting's good. Yeah. Well, the getting's good it right now. Sunshine, yeah. So it is getting good. It's now's the time to 
uh, stockpile some money. If you if you need some extra money, now's the time to get out there and work an extra weekend or two and and save that money. Amen. You know, for something that's definitely so brings me to part of you guys. I mean, as operation managers, give our listeners an idea of your responsibilities every day. You know, when you come in and you've got stuff's got to get done all day long. And you typically are not talking directly to the truck drivers anymore, not as much as you were when you were dispatching them. But how does that work with, with your responsibilities and how does that work with the dispatch and the truck driver? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, first thing you do, you know, we're helping, you know, in the morning get inventory, you know, figure out where we need loads, where we need trucks, you know, a lot of times. And, you know, we try to stay ahead of the trucks, you know, things seem to, work better when you, you know, you got a guy and he's got a load and he's got another load after that, you know, and you can plan and figure out, you know, where we can use trucks. Cause people are calling constantly saying, you know, Hey, I need this, this, you know, well, we've got to know what to tell them, you know? And, and so it's real important. You know, that's probably one of the most important things is just know where the trucks are, you know? And then, uh, you know, another key aspect of what we do is, uh, you know, try to help, uh, dispatch as far as you know getting a guy home and helping out when a guy's broke down and behind and needs some miles and uh you know if there's some type of issue you know with the load or uh you know something you know where we need to get a guy in and visit with him about something you know trying to help spur that along you know because sometimes when you're dispatching a guy and talking to him every day you know you kind of just you're in the here and now you know right now like you know i'm giving you your load information. I'm talking to you about your hours and whatnot. And, you know, there's a whole lot of other stuff that you got to be keeping up with. Right. You know. What about pneumatics, Bradley? I mean, it's it, overall, it's the same thing. You know, you come in, obviously you deal with problems from the night before. If anything happened overnight that you hadn't heard about or you're just finding out about, you know, you find Which that out. Which are typically what? Miss loads? Yeah, anything Something. from a flat tire to a driver getting stuck somewhere, the customer couldn't take their load or breakdowns, just, I mean, you name it. There's right. there's a, a ton of scenarios, but it's that, like he said, take an inventory of where all the trucks are at. We'll usually make a list of, that's uh, about three pages long right now, of all of our loads that are available for tomorrow. And then we'll start kind of clipping away, picking trucks, who's the best to go where. And we'll kind of deal with it from there and of course all along the way you get how do you determine what's what loads get picked up i mean you got if you got too many of them you got a bunch of them i mean how do you coordinate yeah and and that's made a book how many which one's going to take priority that's a huge part of it right now is you got to prioritize and you know we want to do everything for everybody but we can't always do that because there's only a certain amount of trucks so we prioritize it you know based on you know there's some of these customers we pretty much call our core you know the core customers that we do day in day out work for every day of the year christmas i mean you name it it's it's non-stop so we do that and you can go down the line everything from how they pay you to i mean how they treat you how the the facilities are it's load time unload time right, right. You know, that kind of stuff too plays a part in it yeah sure that's your meat and taters yeah. yeah take care of the meat and taters first yeah yeah uh yeah you know talking about what it's, sometimes jason and uh over there in the dumps jason and my brother and shane the four of us i think we do a pretty good job of keeping each other in check on what we're booking <laughs> but you know we we always we were you know especially after the last eighteen months we came out of it's really hard not to just want to hit the ground running and book everything, but you know like you just just to kind of shine a light on how it works is you, especially if there's a big job coming up where a customer's asking for more than you know a couple of trucks you know we'll stand up and talk to each other about it and you know kind of get each other's input whether it be on rate availability you know and just communication with the customer is key right now. Most customers understand how hard it is to find trucks. And as long as we can communicate with them on availability and, 
if as long as we can keep the situation fluid and everybody is informed on what's going on, then you know. Well, you guys have got probably you got your customers mm -hmm. that you talk to every day, and you want to take care of them, right? Yeah, they're special. They're special. <laughs> <laughs> they're special, and then you know you need to get those loads covered and. Scotty's got a special customer. Right. And he's get their loads covered. Bradley's got a special customer right. and everybody's so that that's a hard part there, I would think, to try to figure out who we gotta you know, who whose load we gonna pick up first, you know. Well and then, you know, somebody that no one's ever heard of calls or someone we hadn't talked to in a long time and Yeah. You know, they're they've got all this you yeah. know, work. A lot of loads, yeah. Pay a lot of money and then yeah. uh oh what's like Bradley said, now we got to reprioritize. <laughs> right. Well, and, and that's a that's a thing you know that we've seen too in the last year. You know, we we've got a whole lot of new opportunity. You know, a lot of stuff that we haven't done in a while, or people we've never worked for are calling, and we're you know trying to start relationships with. And you know, a lot of it comes down to you know obviously you know we want to get paid. You know, one, one of the a, things I think that's a whole nother issue right there that a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Is we got to get paid. Yeah. You know, Not everybody we, wants to pay their bill. Right. You know, if, if a owner operator does a load, turns in his paperwork, well, he gets paid the next week. But that doesn't always work on gathering the money no, from the customer. Not so, at all. you know, that that's something else that we, that we you know, factor in and, and have to deal with. And, you know, another deal, uh, you know, when we're going in these places, you know, especially now, you know, we've got a lot of opportunity. You know, there's some places that we don't go to anymore or need to quit going to because it's not a safe place to unload. You know, we kind of talked about it at the start. Yeah, know, tell but, us about that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, one thing that comes to mind is uh, a place down in uh, Columbus, Mississippi, that we used to haul, you know, a whole lot of scrap metal in and out of. Um, you know, and we're still doing a little bit of the alloy because it's a different spot, but we've gotten to a point that we've damaged enough equipment turning over trailers that we're not hauling out of there right now, you know, and, and it's a, it's a hard, you know, pill to swallow sometimes, but, you know, like we said earlier, you know, we've got to have a good place to unload yeah. and that's where the owner operator comes in. You know, you've got to be our eyes and ears out there. And if something, you know, doesn't look good. You know, just call us. You know, I, I think we're all in agreement in here. I'd just soon take a load back as opposed to turn a trailer over. Isn't that the truth, man? It just, you know, so. It's very costly, you know. Uh, I know people probably think we have insurance or something on those trailers, but we don't. I mean, it's a, you, you turn it over or wreck a trailer, then it's got to come out here and sit on the yard until it can get in our shop and we can fix it from the ground up because we do that here at the shop so and there's cost involved in that obviously normally those traders ain't cheap to the ten, yeah so i mean it's not i mean that costs a lot of money to get them fixed but you're also i mean the the every day it sits out here not hauling a load i mean that's an yeah. opportunity cost that we're missing out on too back on the customers real quick do y'all think do y'all know off the top of your head have we gotten some new customers out of this ordeal the last year and a half that we didn't have that are pretty good you know that you you think man we got some and i know y'all say we've had some new customers or new people calling all the time is it is any of those developed maybe into core people like you were talking about bradley you know not really as much on the the pneumatic side just we don't have as many trucks obviously as the dumps but um we haven't really gained any new we've had some opportunity to but we just haven't been able to to get there due to everything else we're already doing, <laughs> you know, which is is not fun. But it's it's just kind of where we're at right now. So we haven't really gained any new that that I can think of, which I'm sure there might be one, but it's it's not right. coming to me. Well, which I know what you're trying to say because recruiting can't hire you enough trucks <laughs> to get you some new customers to keep it going. I understand. I understand. And which is the truth. Uh, we can't we just can't do it right now so uh needs right now as far as you know our current needs i mean we know we need trucks um any particular areas that you guys have seen a little boom in that you could use some i know we've we've had some stuff running on the dumps out in north, north carolina mm -hmm. and uh we're we're working on that but uh anything else as far as we could tell people maybe our current 
Well, I'd, I'd, major love, needs. I'd love to see a wad of owner operators walk through the door that lived somewhere in that triangle of Chicago to St. Louis to say Indianapolis. I mean, that area up there has caught on fire for the dumps. Uh, we've got a few owner operators that live up there, and it's just so easy to get those guys home and get them miles. Yeah. Um, you can yeah, really- I like the thoughts of that St. Louis. You know, that's something that, uh, man, you talking about really some opportunity in St. Louis right now, especially on the dump side. I know we've been talking about it, but we, since we've uh, acquired that terminal up there, uh, and then we've also on the St. Louis side, but then we also have on the Cahokia, Illinois side, bringing grain and stuff in. I mean, we're, we're making a presence up there, and we've got a couple trucks up there that run pretty local, but, man, there's some opportunity up there around St. Louis. Is there much on pneumatic side up around St. Louis? I mean, there is a lot of opportunity. We don't work as, as much up there as we could, but there's definitely opportunity yeah. for sure. We just need trucks. It's incredible how much it's changed, too, since I first started when I came and started dispatching dumps six, seven, I guess, well, almost, I guess it was eight years ago. Used to, if you had a truck in North Carolina. You were sweating. You were sweating. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then I remember uh, recruiting used to send emails. How often can we get a guy home and say, Charlotte, North Carolina? Oh, my, I mean, my thinking was once every three weeks. <laughs> and, you know, nowadays you might get him home a couple times during the week. It's yeah. nuts how much the game has changed on dumps for us. At different, and same type deal in Michigan and Ohio, too. You know, if you ever had a driver – uh, a while back that wanted home in Ohio, it, you know, it felt like a hard thing to do, but now it's just not, you know, we, the, we've got our hands in so many uh, pots up there. So it's just nice. It's a nice problem to have. Well, you guys have done a great job about doing that. I've said that before, you know, we recruiting tries to push you a little bit to, to do that to, because we see that's what everybody's calling wanting to do is get home. Mm-hmm. And so we're trying to push you guys into making that happen. And y'all have done that over parts of the country, you know, that we never would have, I would have never thought we would have done it, uh, you know, so y'all have done a great job about that. So we, we need to push the pneumatics a little bit more to do that. They're a little little more stubborn than yeah. you are, Webb. I can't get Bradley to <laughs> to uh, commit to that, but well, we're was, working on him. I, we we were dealing with some stuff this week on uh, some different lanes and some new opportunity, a couple new customers, uh, some lanes, and talked to some owner operators that we have working for us now that are going to try uh, some new stuff. You know. You know, hooking to we got one guy hooking to a uh, steel dump. I'm gonna be hauling some scrap metal out of the St. Louis area. Um, you know, and, and I told him point blank. I said, "This sure looks good. You know, like it's gonna work out really good." But we really don't know until we get our hands dirty and get get doing it. You know, and he was real, uh, real uh, eager about it and wanting to try it. You know, and told him, you know, if it you know it doesn't work out in a few weeks, well, we'll try something else. Go back to what we're doing. So. You know, there's a lot of opportunity there, you know, and, and don't be scared if, you know, your dispatcher or one of us calls you and, you know, tries to talk to you about doing something. You know, it's it's because we think it's something that will work really well for you, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, be open to that. And, and if it doesn't, it's sure not a mark on anybody. You know, we just, you know, we're just always trying to grow and do more and, you know, we feel like that's how we're going to yeah, and we're able trucks. we're able to do that because of the owner operator. You know, we this company hadn't gotten to where we are now because Bradley and Jason and I all sit in here and we're really good on selling customers our product. You know, I mean, it's just like Jason just said. That's a great that's a great scenario or a great example of how the owner operators are the reason our business has grown. You know, because we've got a particular driver in this scenario that's willing to change up what he's doing hook to a different piece of equipment, dip his toe in the water a little bit, try something new. And, uh, you know, who knows what that might blossom into. Right. Let's take a quick break and hear from our sponsor, Lube Zone. This year, Lube Zone has been a proud sponsor of the Oakley Podcast. We have enjoyed telling you about all the discounts, services, and locations Lube Zone offers to keep Oakley trucking owner operators running smoothly over the road. Stop by during the final quarter of 2021, and you can still receive a $40 discount on your next PM using Shell and Dello Oil brands at any of their locations. Plus, until New Year's Eve, save $15 off any three-axle alignment. Fast is back at LubeZone. Check out LubeZone.com and stop by any location to take advantage of their superior service. So, 
saying that, where do you guys think uh, we're going to be in the future? How many trucks you guys want? I mean, you're constantly hounding me. We need more trucks. I mean, how many do y'all need? Man, we uh, if we could get a hundred tomorrow, I think we'd be. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I think uh, you know we when when we started, uh, you know, I think we were running somewhere in the neighborhood of four hundred trucks, something like that, and so you know we've doubled that, you know, in, in in 15, 16 years, so. And and still is proven to the freights out there. Oh, yeah. It's not like we've tapped out. Right. That's what's, that's probably one of the most frustrating things with you guys' job is it's there to get. I mean, they've, somebody has dumped a pile of money on this table, and but you only get to take one swipe. You got one hand tied right. behind yeah. your back. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't get it all you know, as much as you'd like to. And I mean, I, I say that, I ask that question about how many we want to get to was well, as, as many as the customers will let us get to as many as we can, you know, I mean, you know, it'd be great to top a thousand trucks one of these days. I mean, we got a little over 800 right now, but it, you know, it's going to take time, especially doing it the way we do it. But I think it's definitely there with, especially what we're trying to do, just like you explaining that Jason of you found a customer and then you found a driver mm -hmm. and you put them together and we're going to try and make that work. Yeah. That that's, there's gotta be more of that, you know, for guys, one in retention and one in recruiting, you know, that helps if you can put a, and customer looks to me like customers love that. Oh yeah. Instead of sending some guy, a different guy in there every day that or every week that doesn't know the rules and you got to constantly, you know, tell them. And you know, if you get the same guy going back in there, and you know used to and it's there's still a lot of them that doesn't i mean you guys know this or correct me but i mean you you couldn't get people to pay to keep the same guy it didn't pay to go out and come back you know yeah. you had to do that but now it's there's there's that's coming around a little bit yeah yeah you bet and you can pair it you know you pair stuff with you know a couple of different you know lanes that you have and you know work something out you know and, and it worked, you know, I know it has to work for the owner operator. You know, if you, you know, we've always kind of, you know, it's just our nature, the way we've always been, you know, as far as, you know, a guy knowing what he's going to do next, mm -hmm. you know, we've been real bad about that, you know, not because we're trying to keep secrets from a guy, but that's just kind of the way we've always run, run our business. You know, you may go here one day, you may go here another day. And, you know, if a guy knows what he's doing for a couple of days and kind of knows where he's going to be, I think that would make for me if if I was out there that would make a world of difference. Well, don't you so, want to know what you're doing for the next couple of days? Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, <laughs> I know where I'm going to sleep. I know where I'm going to shower. Yeah. I know where I'm going to eat. And I mean, that that's one thing that just is so hard for me to wrap my head around. I admire those guys so much on how they can just take on the day with a great attitude every day and they might not even know where they're going. I mean, just step yeah. back and think about that for a minute. They wake up with good attitudes, calling here, ready to make some money, ready to do some work, and they don't even know where they're going. Uh, <laughs> where am I going? <laughs> an example of that, Jerry Tucker, our, one of our pneumatic dispatchers, he's out on the road this week riding with Elder McCorkle. Oh, yeah? He was in here Monday morning, you know, ready to go. He was going to go load at Boxite and go to Pryor, Oklahoma. Had his trip planned for the whole week. I left, go to lunch, came back a little bit later, and he was calling, and Hunter and them were telling me, and they changed him, was loading him out of Arkansas going to Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> so his whole game plan for the whole changed week changed him, him and hey. he's been kind of panicking a little bit, but he's he's going to make it. Get a little taste of yeah. that. That's the way I mean. That, yeah. You got you got to roll with it. Get a little taste of that. And change up. Throw that piece of paper away. So. <laughs> we're going to change you up a little bit. Well, we hear that a lot, don't we? How you guys uh, – you know, I know we talked a little bit about expansion. I mean, I think y'all touched on that about, especially, you know, guys in the Carolinas, guys in Chicago, Indiana, you ex you've expanded your customer base up there where it's easier to get people home. I mean, but the St. Louis, we touched on St. Louis is a great opportunity right there. We just got to get that done. You know, we got to get more operators in there, and I think that's going to come together. It's just taking time. Uh, but working with, you know, speaking of St. Louis, working with places like that uh within bruce oakley us working together how does that work on y'all's end i mean you know it's it's oakley trucking 
but the big parent company is Bruce Oakley Incorporated. And I mean, y'all work with other parts of Bruce Oakley, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, um, so, you know, we have a fertilizer company, Oakley Fertilizer, uh, and they sell fertilizer and salt, uh, out of here in Arkansas and all over the country. You know, we were, uh, we were actually at lunch today uh, and met up with a couple of those guys and we're talking about, you know, all the different places they've got stuff going on in Illinois and, uh, Ohio and Cincinnati, Cincinnati, yeah. you know, yeah, we got a place up there. So, you know, there's, they've got a whole lot going on. And, uh, so, you know, at different times of the year, you know, we do a lot of work for Oakley fertilizer, you know, and, uh, you know, they, they're a customer of ours, you know, and it's a little different cause they're, you know, up on the one floor above us. So it's, yeah. you know, it's a lot easier to get in front of them and, you know, hash stuff out as far as truck availability and rates and stuff like that. So, but it's a good relationship. It also helps, um, you know, I actually, uh, was dealing with Tony, uh, Tony works in our fertilizer company. He's been here for gosh, 25 years probably. And, uh, we had a truck up in Kansas. So we were looking to try to get something back here and, uh, he got us a load, got us a load right back to Arkansas out of Kansas, a load of salt, you know? And so there's some working together on that end, you know, and sometimes they'll call and, you know, they've got, you know, a customer in a bind that needs some fertilizer and, you know, we'll go to work for them. So, yeah. you know, it's a good, it works well like that. That's pretty nice in, when you can produce your own yeah. loads yeah. in the house sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it works out pretty good. It works out pretty good. Well, does pneumatics y'all do yeah. much? Yeah, same for pneumatics. We haul a, a ton of salt for them daily. I mean, I don't know how many loads a week it is, probably 20. Out of um, here? Out of Moralton Terminal, uh, doing salt. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot out of Kansas, Grand Saline, Texas, Alabama, Tennessee, just salt to a bunch of a bunch of different places. And we do fertilizer out of our terminal down in Shreveport, coming to Arkansas and going to various places as well. But, yeah, we work with them every day, talk to them all day long. Usually. In the same building? Yeah. It works. I mean, you it know, does. that's that's part of it. What about the grain side? We do much. Uh, we do the hoppers do quite a bit uh, with the grain folks uh, hauling, uh, uh, you know, beans and corn yeah. and wheat. Uh, a lot of it out of North Texas coming back up here. You know, they're hauling a lot of uh, granules right now, and so that kind of helps get get yeah. trucks back this way. And uh, so you know, it, it's a it's a good deal for the grain company. It's a good deal for our hopper division we uh well and they're needing trucks too right yeah i mean I mean, not as bad as hoppers, i mean well i'm talking about no but they're needing they're oh, yeah. calling they're yeah needing absolutely us. yeah you know they can't find trucks to haul the stuff either right i mean that's uh that's why they're calling us all the time right or sending a message downstairs yeah however y'all do it now yeah well it's good to have uh you know good for business to be like it is i mean it's just uh you know, we're very blessed to be able to have the business that we have and mm -hmm. and so much of it. Now that the, you know, how long it's going to last, I don't know. I mean, I got a feeling it's going to last a while. It, it sure, sure is seeming like it. it's going to. I hope it does. Oh, know. yeah. I don't know if we'll get 23 years out of it that Scotty wants, but <laughs> if we can get a, if we can get some, it's good. But it. You know, as long as I've been here, it's always been a cycle. You know, it goes up and up and down, and part of it. But you know, it's uh, it's good to hear what goes on inside the building, inside these walls, and and how you guys think because you guys are the heartbeat of it, producing this stuff. You know, and things to do that we've got to have stuff to do. Or these truck drivers, as much as they carry this company, if we don't give them a load, they're going somewhere else. Yeah. where they can get a load mm -hmm. and if we don't work hard like you're talking about piecing a guy with a customer to haul try some dedicated stuff and try new stuff and i mean it makes a big difference uh that what you guys do every day and producing all this freight it I, I know it's uh you know some some days it's easier than others when you know you got all the loads it makes it nice but i'm sure there's days, and y'all remember them very well, that there wasn't any loads. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you produce some anyway, and that's the tough, tough side of it, you know, that happens. But but anyway, hey, you guys got anything else to add? Anything else you wanted to say off the top of your head? Uh, well, we were talking about locations. Uh, 
Baton Rouge, uh, yes. New Orleans, that part of the world. Uh, we're always looking for trucks down there. We've got some jobs with some uh, uh, cow signing uh, places down there uh, with the uh, oil industry. Um, yeah, you know, local some, home every night, Baton Rouge area for sure is where we mainly need them. You bet. Um, a lot of stuff to do down there but that's a dedicated deal we could you know, i've told this before in a podcast but we got that baton rouge new orleans area local home every night you can you know we can even have a day cab on those then we got st louis we got some local stuff there that we can get you home uh pretty regular if not every night we got a couple guys we're doing that with now so that's a lot of opportunity there um we got some stuff on the east coast that's home every weekend for sure out of carolinas even a semi i was talking to one guy today about a semi dedicated out of moncure and going to those several places around there and just a lot of stuff i mean that's going on that, that we can make happen here so always needing trucks but but i wanted to do this i appreciate y'all doing it. i just mentioned this podcast 24 hours ago and i appreciate y'all volunteering to do it because it, it helps uh for our owner operators our listeners to understand what's going on in here and how how good you guys are doing it too that's uh that's really good and i appreciate you doing that too it makes a big difference so all right well uh i appreciate everybody everybody listening to this podcast um you know this thing wouldn't happen if it wasn't for you guys wanting to hear it and i, I appreciate all your input you give me feedback you give me on what you want to hear and we we love to bring it to you a new one every week if you got ideas please call me text me uh some of the things that you'd like to hear this was one of them part of the uh, somebody wanted to hear about the pneumatics operation so that's what we wanted to do so keep it coming and as always check us out on youtube uh, check us out at podcast.bruceoakley.com and be sure and tune in every Wednesday for a new episode. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you next week.